All right, so then when we get to Genesis 1 and the argument you make in your book, um, I know a lot of people listening to this, when they hear a cosmic temple inauguration, <laughs> they're probably thinking, you know, what what the heck is that? So um, I'm going to, I hate to ask you to do this again, but can you give another t- 10, 15 minute overview if you can? Of just the, just the gist of your argument, Lost World of Genesis One, the Cosmic Temple inauguration, God's rest, functional ontology, and you know all that good stuff. Okay, so let's start with some um, some re- revised or more specified terminology. Okay. When I wrote Lost World of Genesis One, um, the one of the major points that I made was that we need to differentiate between thinking about creation materially, which is what our inclination is. It's our science and it's just our world. Uh, And so when we think about creation, we think materially. And I saw a contrast in Genesis that led me to believe, and I've tried to support this, that they were not thinking materially. But of course, that meant that I had to have a word for saying, how are they thinking? (laughs) <laughs> if they're not thinking materially, how are they thinking? Mm-hmm. At the time when I developed this theory, the best word I could come up with was functional. That they were thinking of God establishing a functional cosmos uh, where everything is working uh, toward a certain end. Um, and it was just the best I could come up with. It's turned out that that's been very confusing for people. Uh, for me to talk about a functional ontology and things of that sort. And people have misunderstood it quite a bit. And just when I do presentations uh, in seminars or my my critics when they write book reviews. Uh, And so I now use slightly different terminology. um, And that is that I believe that they're talking about not the material origins of the cosmos, but the ordering of the cosmos. Now, I, I had that in the Lost sort of Genesis 1 because I mm-hmm. talked about functions as having to do with having a role and a purpose in an ordered system. So I had the word order there, but I've promoted it. It's, it's now more how I would define what I'm trying to get at. Order was the highest value in the ancient world. And therefore, the establishment of order was very important. And I can give lots of examples of that, but we don't need to do that now. So I talk about the seven days as ordering the cosmos, but ordering generally has a purpose that drives it. Ordering it to what end? Ordering it to accomplish what? And so that comes to the second part of my thesis, And that is that God was ordering the cosmos, not only so that it would work well for us, but also he's setting it up as a place where he intended to come and dwell among us and be in relationship with us. That's the driving purpose. And so uh, where do you find that? Well, I was connecting that to day seven. Um, And... um, In the ancient world, the center of order was the temple. And the the deity was resting in the temple and was ruling in the temple. And his rest and his rule were equivalent. That's how they express it. Mm -hmm. So rest was not an issue of relaxing or leisure or something of that sort, uh, taking a nap. Okay, resting was a matter of stability and security. And so when gods rest in temples, they're not resting in beds primarily. Sometimes they do sleep because they're at peace, they're at ease, and they can do so. Everything's running well. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is a god rests in a temple on a throne. And so he's ruling over the cosmos that he has ordered under his control. And so when I look at the purpose of the seven days, the seven days is ordering for the purpose of God taking up his throne, resting in the cosmos, not just in a temple, 
which is a microcosmos, a picture of the cosmos, but resting, ruling in the cosmos itself. So that's why I talk about cosmic temple. Now, the seven days comes into play because there are numerous occasions in the Bible and also found in the ancient world where once they've built a temple materially, then there's an inauguration or dedication process that brings it online, that makes it operative, functional uh, as, as the temple, which then becomes the seat of God's power and the seat of his control as he plays out his role as the source and center of order. These inauguration dedication ceremonies at times, especially in the Bible, are seven days. And so this idea that the seven-day sequence is appropriate for inaugurating sacred space. With the temple, that sacred space is that structure. Um, with the cosmos, the same idea, if he's inaugurating it as sacred space, ordering it as sacred space, and by sacred space, I mean his presence is going to be there. Then seven days is an appropriate kind of context in which to deal with that. So that's the cosmic temple idea. Mm -hmm. Just the idea that as God dwells in temples and rules from temples, that God dwells in the cosmos and rules in the cosmos, yet he transcends the cosmos just as he transcends the temples. Mm 